Hello friends, today I'm gonna review the newly released NVIDIA GT 1030 from MSI. Is it worth its money? We're going to find out. I will give away this video card and ship it anywhere to one of my viewers so make sure to subscribe and like the video. Let's talk about specs first. It is equipped with a 2GB of GDDR5 memory and it's slightly overclocked from factory. This 1030 from MSI is a dual slot card with a 90mm cooling fan but there is also a silent version for those who like to go thin and fanless. It has an HDMI 2.0 and a DVI-D port on the back. It uses Nvidia's Pascal architecture with a base clock at 1265 MHz and boost to 1518 MHz using Nvidia's boost technology, although I noticed in my test that it clocks higher than that. It has an amazingly low 30 Watt TDP and of course it doesn't need any extra power connector to run and due to its size you can basically fit it anywhere. It has the same size with a 3.5 inch hard disk drive. I chose this MSI 1030 because this is an overclocked version of the new chip as it normally runs at 1215 MHz so I thought it would be more interesting to test. And its price! I paid for this example just a little under 80 euros. I will leave it up to you to judge if it's overpriced or not as its price depends a lot on where you live. So let's move on to some benchmarks and start from the usual synthetic ones. Unigine Valley first on high settings and we got 37.4 frames on average with a minimum of 21.6 frames. Next at superposition, medium settings and we have an average of 39 frames with a minimum of 30. At Skydiver using the 1080p preset it managed to keep an average a little under 60 frames at all tests. A quick temperature burn test showed that the cart managed to keep under 46 degrees Celsius on full load and be very quiet at the same time. And now let's move on with gaming. I will display GPU usage and temperatures at all times. Frame count is from the actual gaming session. All games had a 2-3 to three minute gameplay test in order to log the data but you will see only a small part in order to keep the video shorter. Full video benchmark footage you will find following the link on the corner of the screen or in the description below. I kept the settings in a level where the games were playable enough in order to get a better gaming experience. Exact video settings you will find also in the full benchmark video.
As you saw yourself with some tweaks in the settings, the car performs surprisingly better than I expected. It could run all games in 1080p looking and performing really nice. So that was it for today guys, let me know what you think about the GT1030 in the comments below. Don't forget that I will be giving away the cards so like and subscribe. Also in the next days I will be doing a comparison between the GT1030 and the Radeon RX 550, so stay tuned. See you on the next one.